Hi guys. Here we are today with uh, Mary Coakley, mm -hmm. and uh, she runs the Far Out Pizza Place down here in Jordan River. Um, now you have a partner that you... Uh, two partners. Yeah, two partners. Two partners, yeah. Matt Lambert and uh, Josh Lambert, his son. Yes. We all three um, saw the possibilities last year and uh, went in and bought this together. Okay, so mm. far out pizza, it's not that far out, it's about half an hour drive from Souk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and of course uh, there's an amazing view back here. Always stunning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a uh, you know, great place to actually have the uh, counters aligned. You can have your mm -hmm. slice of pizza and mm -hmm. uh, there's an amazing gallery that uh, is here. Um, when you first walk in of the photography done by mm -hmm. Matt and yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. great. Yeah, yeah. One of our visions was to have a photography gallery. Uh, we've talked about it for years through all of our travels and adventures and this building is just perfectly situated for a gallery. Yeah. And that was one of the draws to kind of take this on. Yeah, I was very impressed when I walked in immediately there was a it was different than what I expected. Instead of being like a kind of a dark, rustic, you know, far out pizza, it was like a very bright, welcoming mm -hmm. um, atmosphere with uh, the art on the walls, which is very uh, 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 this is very descriptive of the uh, the nature that's around here. Yeah, yeah, we pulled together. Uh, from our collection that we just more or less had pieced together and Matt and I did a show a couple of years ago uh, featuring the Wild West Coast um, and just kind of put it up on the walls and have been busy slaving away in the kitchen and not able to get back into the gallery but it is a really lovely collection of places that we've been and um, it represents pretty well nature that we love and pretty well all of our imagery is all around nature no matter what part of the world it's in. Yeah, I'm, I don't know, I'm drawn to nature also just mm -hmm. for the first time, you know, wearing rocks and yeah, wood and those. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, nature being as close to God as possible would be a nice way to say that we're all connected mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. little ways of looking at that all part of the same. Absolutely, yeah, well. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mary, how did you get to uh, the creation of uh, Far Out Pizza? Like, how did you wind up coming out to Jordan River? Well, one day, um, a year ago, last October, Matt and I came out uh, to go surfing and camping for the weekend. And we were going to camp just over there at Jordan River and uh, at the campground. And he says, but before we get settled, he says, I just want to take you over and show you something. And he drove in his VW bus over to this building and he had pointed in the window this handmade for lease sign and in brackets or buy. And he saw this a few days before that when he was out surfing and he had been plotting and scheming, thinking of all the possibilities of what it would mean for us to um, um, own this place and have this gallery, be able to dash out the door any day there's a good swell, which he's an addicted surfer, and that's probably his primary reason for wanting to buy it. And then the idea of um, utilizing the kitchen uh, and being able to offer a food service of some sort. I mean, we really didn't have pizza in mind at that time. Yeah. Something to do with coffee and sweets and soup, something that's very, very simple, and focus on our photography. And then we discovered uh, the cold shoulder just around the corner, who just opened two months before that. And so we were not wanting to kind of do the same template that they had established as their niche here. So to complement. And um, we made inquiries, Matt and I, we had a view of it. We found out numbers of you know what it would cost. Uh, Saved up till midnight, crunching out a little uh, spreadsheet on a big piece of cardboard, and thought at the end of the day, are we crazy? We'd have to sell a lot of coffee and soup, and um, I, and we're retired, and it seems like a lot of work. So we said no. And two days later, he had uh, an outing with his two sons, and when he told them about it, Josh, his youngest son, said, "I want in. That's a great idea." They both thought it's a great idea. So, back it went again, back we came to visit, and um, from there we just started tossing numbers around and shifting gear to pizza, where Josh has got a bit of a pizza background from his youth, and um, 
uh, we figured it was a better, a better and easier, simple way to go because we're not restaurant people at all. Right. And uh, well, it went really quickly from the end of October to the 26th of November. Um, decisions were made, offers were made, agreements were had, and legal paperwork were signed, and we became the owner of Barrow Pizza. Wow, <laughs> that is a good story. Oh, wow. I just, yeah. I mean, that was about uh, you know three or four minutes explaining that. Oh dear, too which long. Which is great. I just, yeah. I just saw that. My style, man. <laughs> yeah, I just saw the seed get planted with the idea, and then mm -hmm. it uh, conspired to. You know, form and people got involved, and enthusiasm really does. Yeah. Uh, so we have more people that can uh, not only visit that, hear the story, and mm -hmm. be inspired mm -hmm. to also go through that yeah. same process. That it can happen. Yeah, it's possible. It's totally possible. Yeah, indeed. And uh, you put a lot of great life into the, uh, mm -hmm. the place. We worked for four months renovating this uh, this place, and we did have setbacks at the beginning uh, because of then decisions about BC Hydro, which I told you about, who want to close the whole oh. alley out. We won't even talk about that. Okay. Um, but one, once we got started and said, well, if they're going to come our way, we're going to create what this business looks like for us, not the old template, which was a much darker, drearier place that you were imagining it would be. Um, and it required a lot of work. And for four months solid, Matt and Josh and I were out here every day uh, renovating, painting, sanding floors, um, create, uh, replacing floors. And uh, when we finished with it all, and we had this vision of a white gallery and uh, these wood benches and table benches, and we created all of that, we thought, far out. <laughs> it's really far out. We must open. Um, and. Uh, um, we really couldn't wait with all of the political hedgings that were going on. We just decided from there we would do it. And Matt did um, a week's worth of research on, online on a pizza forum by scientists who have taken their love of pizza making down to a molecular level. Oh, yeah. And um, a, a forum of people all around the United States and the world who do pizzas and he kind of went with the wisdom of these scientists and created uh, a pizza dough using their recipes and formulas and uh, from the first day that he made 14 pizzas thinking he was going to throw them all into the compost they turned out to be really good and he went out to the street and said please eat my pizza come in and be a tester and gave it away for free and they loved it and many people said it was the best dough that they've ever eaten and uh, so we haven't had to change our recipe at all and the next day we opened for business and we've been going flat out ever since. Nice, yeah. great. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for sharing the story about oh, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you've uh, been, you know, obviously very committed and uh, I wanted to ask you if uh, you had a piece of advice based on all this experience that you've put into making this business and over your life, mm. what would you like to share with me? Oh, wow, advice. Hmm. Um, I think um, I think you use the word commitment um, yeah. and very committed to, to uh, the vision and um, and bringing that passion into it. I think that that is really quite key. And be prepared of the hard work that opening a business is all about in any business, whatever you know, the endeavor might be. A restaurant business, I have no experience in whatsoever, so it was all just a whole brand new experience. I felt like I was leaping into a marathon race without any skill or any training, and it was, uh, a bit of a challenge in our first month, but I feel fitness now. I feel I have a fitness and able to kind of keep up the pace with it. Great. So, yeah, that would be something is to be prepared. Be prepared for, you know, the, uh, the devotion to it all. Okay, so be prepared to the devotion. Take time uh, to, uh, don't worry about what's going to happen. Just have faith that it, it will work yeah, out. Definitely. Stay committed to the vision. Yeah, exactly. And try and strike a balance because you can suck your soul out into it and forget about carrying it for yourself um, and so creating that balance in time and energy and uh, the things that your life needs to hold precious must still continue great a lot of good advice
Um, we're running a bit long here, whoa, yeah. but um, a lot of good stuff. Um, if you had someone to nominate as a daily gem, who would you like to nominate? Oh my gosh. <sighs> well, there's so many people um, that, that I do admire in the soup community, um, and they do wonderful things. I'm going to go with uh, mentioning Elizabeth Say, who is a newcomer to Souk this past year. A very creative woman. Uh, she is known as the Divine Chocolate Truffles Woman at the Shirley and Souk Night Markets or uh, Weekend Markets. And um, she works with children and teaches children's yoga, and she works with children who have disabilities and she does it in a, in a creative, soulful, um, life-preparing um, way and in, in a way that just takes these young children and brings out their complete respect and honor as the little human beings that they are. Um, she just oozes love and um, I just admire her so much and I'm really happy that I have her working with us here and I get to work with her and learn from her. Okay, wonderful. So, Elizabeth uh, Say, um, we want to check out your oozing uh, of loveness and uh, test your chocolate truffles out and mm -hmm. all kinds of fun things Gotta like wait that. for the next Shirley Market next spring. Okay, yeah. I'll be there. Um, and also, just to let you know, uh, just for being a daily gem, Dave from the Stick in the Mud is going to give you a free vicino oh. from the new Speed Stick. Oh, okay. I know you serve his coffee here. Yes, whatnot, I do. But, yeah. You know, of course, that's there for you. Yeah, cool. So you are a gem. Oh, thank you. And so are you. And thank you for doing this. Yeah, I really appreciate that.